Today, I have a cool little segment of science news. Today, I want to talk about a recently discovered set of human footprints, preserved in the intertidal sediment of a beach on Calvert Island, British Columbia. It sits somewhere between the Alaskan Panhandle to the north and the northwestern tip of Washington State to the south. The footprints were radiocarbon dated to be about 13,000 years old, which puts them right around the time of the end of the last ice age. During the last ice age, massive ice sheets reached down from the poles across almost the entirety of Canada and into the continental United States. The Bering Land Bridge, which connected Alaska to Siberia, was almost entirely covered in glaciers during the Ice Age, which would have impeded the movement of human colonists. The sea level was also low enough to expose the Bering Land Bridge, because all of this water was locked up in all of these glaciers and this, this massive extent of glaciation. There are two major competing hypotheses for how humans settled the New World. One hypothesis is that as the Ice Age ended and the glaciers melted and receded northwards, this briefly, uh, and by briefly I mean it took a couple thousand years, this briefly opened a window of traversable passages across the Bering Land Bridge. This landscape would have been flat, muddy, and swampy, with the soil being composed of finely ground particulates. When glaciers move over an area, they grind all the soil into a very fine powder, into a very fine silt. This landscape was perhaps also populated with prehistoric boreal megafauna, like northern saber-toothed tigers, mastodons, giant bears, and other kinds of dangerous beasts. As the glacial melting continued, sea levels rose and the Bering Land Bridge was eventually submerged, cutting off the migrating humans from their Asiatic origins. Now, I've talked about this hypothesis a lot. I've made several news segments about it, and I've talked about it in my biogeography episode on Beringia. But over the decades, more and more data is coming around to support a second hypothesis. This second hypothesis, this new argument, suggests that instead of walking across the swampy, dangerous, difficult Bering land bridge, human migrants would have instead come by boat, having moved along the northeastern coast of Asia along the southern coast of Beringia, and down along the western coast of North America. Now, I've made a news segment about this hypothesis, too. I think I described it as being called the Kelp Superhighway, or something like that. Well now, these newly discovered footprints provide strong evidence for that second hypothesis, because they demonstrate that humans were in the New World 13,000 years ago presumably before the Bering Land Bridge was readily traversable. Duncan McLaren is the lead author of the study, and he said, quote, This finding provides evidence of the seafaring people who inhabited this area during the tail end of the last major ice age, unquote. The authors of the study suggest that, due to the heavy vegetation and the often swampy habitats, that define the Pacific Northwest, it might be difficult to find more human footprints, more evidence of these seafaring migrants. But this shouldn't discourage us. The data suggests that if we spend the effort to look, we're quite likely to find more evidence of these ancient peoples, somewhere. These peoples who were the first to discover and colonize the New World. About the footprints themselves, there were 29 of them not walking in a straight line, but kind of crowded around as if they had stood in one spot and looked around their surroundings to see where else they could move to or where there might be fertile soil with healthy plants. The researchers estimate that these 29 footprints were made by three different people. Two of them were probably adults, possibly a mother and a father. And the third person, known to us only by their tiny little footprints left in the prehistoric mud, was presumably their child.